In today's episode of Street Notes, I'm switching up a little and I'm shooting with the Canon EOS R6 and the RF 35mm 1.8 lens. So this video covers two different days of shooting. The first part here is back in December, really the first day that I'd ever taken this camera out to shoot personal stuff with. I'd only ever used it for wedding work before. This ice rink is often the busiest part of the city at this time of year and shortly after I arrived here unfortunately they called everybody off the ice so they could do that you know that wiping thing to smooth it out again. So I made my way up to the Christmas market and floated around there for a little while. Didn't actually stay out too long to shoot on this day. However, just as I was getting ready to head back towards the car, this little scene passed by, just a bunch of people really, and a uh, guy dressed quite interestingly in the foreground. I liked the suit that he was wearing. And he sort of looks down at the ground and I, I kind of liked the, that angle of his head there. And this other guy in red fills out the frame in the back. Might be a little bit distracting because he's wearing that red puffer jacket thing but I think it balances the, the composition out, at least. This is the second day, and at this booth here, these two guys were cooking in there, and I haven't usually seen two guys in there, but I've never been able to get good photos in this place before, I've always struggled with it. But with the flat light today, and the lights on inside the booth, I ended up getting this shot, and I was really pleased with this. This was definitely one of my favorite shots of the day. It was one of the first shots I took, and I hadn't even started the GoPro until after I took this shot. But I think the second guy in there fills out that frame a little bit. And even that guy in the background on the right fills out there. And But most of the interest is on this guy on the left. Now, the other thing I've noticed about this camera is it spits out really nice JPEGs. And this one is the raw file, but you'll see here is the JPEG. And I actually think that is a little bit more natural looking than the raw file, even though the raw file was uh, had the camera standard profile applied. This JPEG has the camera standard profile applied, but looks different. It has a little bit less blue in it. I guess it doesn't have the profile corrections, and so there's maybe a little bit more uh, darkness around the edges and slight vignetting or something. But either of these would be absolutely fine. I think just in this instance, in this particular photo, I prefer the raw file overall. Yeah. This cow thing has always grabbed my attention, but unfortunately, Every time I'm in Denver, the light's coming from that side, uh, or it's just not on the cow at all. And today it was hitting it, oh, cool. and I was just trying to figure out some sort of composition. And as this guy walked past wearing kind of a cool hat, he's also dressed in blue. There's a kind of complimentary color thing going on here, but he's also in a similar tone. You know, he's in a blue tone, which is the same as the cow's head. It's kind of weird. I think there could be something much better here. Walking up some side streets is not something that I do a lot of the time, but we decided to take this side street here. And there's this restaurant place and the kid standing on his dog's leash outside it. The dog turns and looks at us and I like the shapes and the light here. This is the JPEG, which is very similar to the raw file again. It's slightly more muted colors, I would say, maybe a little more natural. I could go with either this or the raw file again. And then I also just processed an extra JPEG with a cloudy white balance because I thought the first one might be a little bit too blue.
First one is the RAW, second one is the JPEG. First one is the RAW, second one is the JPEG. You may have seen in previous videos, I've always came back to this spot of like buffalo art sculpture things, looking for something happening. And I've never found it, but in this case, this other scene happened just behind me. And I think it worked out really well. I thought I was gonna just photograph these two guys rolling a fridge down the street, but another guy or person walks in front of the two of them and casts a shadow with their hat on the side of the fridge. And I think it just fills it out nicely. It makes it a little bit more difficult to repeat. And here's the JPEG version, slightly darker. I again think I still prefer the raw. Now turning back to these buffalo, I thought to myself that the light was actually okay. I've usually looked at it from the other direction, waiting for the sun to hit it to find a composition that way. But my mistake was that the best background, I think, is actually on the other side of the street. Kind of worked out quite well, and there was a bit of bounce light from a building in the background that was uh, putting the light back on to the, onto the buffalo here. So maybe there's a sort of abstract composition can be made here. And this isn't the one that I came up with straight away. This was after many, many shots. I just couldn't find the exact moment because all the GoPros just staring down at the ground at the camera, unfortunately. And I just can't believe that in the two years almost that I've been shooting in Denver, I never thought to just turn the other way and try and make a composition without the sun having to be on the thing. Like it can be in the shade and that's okay. And I think this turned out well. And there's also the JPEG here, which also looks very good. And either this or the RAW file, I think would be just fine. So I'm having a bit of a time deciding whether I like the in-camera JPEGs or just a mildly edited RAW file from, from the R6. This corner was is further down on 16th Street and I've I walk past it most of the time when I'm coming into the city. It's just never been a place that I've stopped and hung out for any length of time. Either the light's not quite right on it or it just seems too quiet. But we stood here for a bit and it's funny how once in a while you'll get this little pocket of people that come through. And one or two of the photos came out okay. I don't think there was any bangers, but I quite like this one, how you know there's, they're passing through the different light and shadow and they're framed within other elements within the frame. I've never really had an interest in going back to a DSLR style camera for street photography. I've very much grown accustomed to the feeling of that the rangefinder style with the viewfinder over here. It doesn't really cover as much as your face. It feels different. It feels a lot different to, to me at least using something with a viewfinder in the middle, which is ridiculous because it's literally about an inch difference. And as much as this camera is very small for DSLR, like compared to the 5D Mark IV, which I'm filming on today, but it's not small compared to most of the lenses that I've been using for the past couple of years for street photography. So for me, and what I think is some level of social anxiety or something, this slightly bigger setup is taking a little bit of getting used to. However, in practice, when I was out there, I didn't really see any different of a reaction from people than I did when I was shooting with the Fuji X-E4 or the Leica or anything like that. Although I do think with something like a Ricoh GR, you're probably gonna get ignored for longer with the GR or just be taken less seriously or something. So all that being said, I'm not going to give up using this for street photography this year. I'm gonna play with it a little bit more because I found it actually to be quite nice and versatile to use. As much as I miss the manual focusing, I can at least at F11, I can use the back button focus and lock focus, you know, six feet in front of me and basically everything will be in focus. And if something comes close or, you know, I wanna focus on someone in the foreground or something, I'll use this other eye, fo eye focus button and I'll just pick out that person or I can focus and recompose or whatever. And while I would rather just do that to know <laughs> that things are in focus with a focus tab, uh, I don't know, it's worth a try. I'm gonna experiment with it, is basically what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's better or if I like it more or not. I um, would never have even tried this lens if 
a 35 millimeter M mount lens would actually not vignette on this bloody camera. Any 35 millimeter M mount lens has had this purple fringe around the side. A regular vignette would be correctable, or at least you could live with it, but this purple fringe with 35 or wider uh, just, just throws me off too much. So anyways, more videos with the Canon R6 coming up at some point. However, first of all, I'm going to get hold of the GR3X and play with that for a little while because I've got a feeling I'm going to want to buy one of those. All right, thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And drop me a comment down below, let me know what you thought. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.